IP addresses. Subnet masks. Private IP ra Anyway, yeah, this is a bunch of cool stuff. Uh, I got a couple of feedback. Some, some feedback from the, the IP addressing video. And I kind of laughed because people were like, man, you should get a different mic. You should get a lavalier. You should get this. You get that. Like, well, let's set some things straight. First off, I have a lavalier. And it runs into my Roland. Uh, it also records there, and then I have it piped directly into the camera. But regardless, the noise that you're hearing isn't static in the form of like, oh, you got electrical noise on the line. It's it's servers. That one is probably the loudest one that I got. It's a 2950 from Dell. Uh, this is a 310. It also makes a bunch of noise, but those are the two louder ones. These ones down here are less of an issue, but they are there. Uh, and when and if I can get this one replaced and find somewhere to put these six drives, uh, the issue that I ran into is the 710s or the 715s have, uh, they have a, uh, they have two and a half inch drives instead of three and a half inch drives. I could put them in the rackable system, but that one, well, that one was really loud for a long time. It was really loud. But then I swapped out the fans for some Noctua's that seem to work fine. Uh, and then maybe that's what I'll do. Maybe I'll swap out the fans on the, the Dell and get it uh, lower noise. Otherwise, I've also got these switches up here. And they make a little bit of noise. But I'm working on acquiring a a microphone that is going to be less omnidirectional. The lavalier that I have is omni. It sits usually right here on my chest. Uh, that I mean, that's that's it. But otherwise, it literally is the noise from that. Like I even took this here as a, a trying to dampen it. So I got this big blanket that I, for while I was recording, I put it around the outside and. Just as the C of a test. And it works a little bit. I gotta find a better solution to that. Because that's the back side of the cabinet. It doesn't have the plexiglass cover, it's just got a mesh cover. Uh, so generally it stays open. And I've got some other ideas that I'm gonna work on to maybe put a just a like a divider that I can put here to kind of cover it up. Um, so that's that is on my list of possibilities. Uh, otherwise. Uh, you know, when I'm here, and this is where this stuff is, gets recorded with this on the backdrop, the microphone is right here. So I'm looking at getting a, uh, a, like a shotgun mic, which normally is used for outdoors, but because the amount of noise that I have in here, it's, maybe it'll do something. Otherwise, I'm going to get a, uh, like a, a hypochi hypochondriac, no, a hypercardioid microphone. Yes, hypercardioid can uh, microphone. And then I'd probably mount it here in the ceiling, uh, somewhere up in this this area, and it would just point directly down at me, uh, as opposed to being uh, on the mic. You know, I can put it on the camera. I'll test it on the camera, and then I'm going to put it up high to see if I can get it closer and see if that cuts down on a lot of the background noise. So that's hopefully going to happen. Otherwise, I've got a lot of stuff. I know people were like, you should do this, this, and this, and talk about a bunch of other stuff, and maybe give a background on binary, and maybe I'll make a video about binary. Uh, the idea really was to try to cut this down from like a 40 minute lecture to a quick little snippet of something to show a relationship between IP addresses and the subnet mask. And then in a later video that will probably be like 20 minutes long is going to be talking about uh, variable length subnet masks, uh, different private IP ranges and what you're going to use it for. Uh, this was just an example of what you can do and how that translates as you shift things around but there'll be an entire video on subnetting uh, as well uh, I'm gonna, I've got a video coming up talking about the OSI model that is going to show the seven layers of the OSI model how it relates to the TCP model and how things like InfiniBand uh, throw a wrench in the entire thing because they exist at multiple levels which is awesome into its own right uh, but it's all in the mix uh, otherwise that's kind of where we're kind of where I'm at with all of that. Um, I've also got some more advanced stuff in the pipeline for such as uh, cable management, 
talking about cables in general. Like, I've got some really cool... I've got a bunch of sample cables here that are uh, Cat 5E, Cat 6, uh, plenum, non-plenum, stranded, solid cord, that kind of jazz. And I got a video describing the differences in those and why you would use one over the other. Why Cat 5E is necessary for long-range gigabit versus short-range gigabit and why Cat 5 technically works for gigabit. Uh, but Cat 5e is better at you know noise canceling. We'll go into a little more details as to why that is, and then what fiber optics can do, and the, the range on fiber. And I mean, there's a whole, it's a long process. The idea is that this will be a large catalog of videos for reference uh, for anyone who is either a learning this stuff or b just wants a, a quick refresher, or maybe somebody's just like, hey, that's a really cool way of of explaining that. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I, I, when I went to school, uh, most of the stuff I had already dug into, uh, but the people that I was going to school with were having a difficult time catching some of these concepts, and I, I, I could never convey to them how I am able to calculate all of this. So th this is kind of a kind of a finally able to put that into words. So it's a little all over the place, but I started in the middle because everybody's familiar with IP addresses, and then I'm going to work my way down and then back up. And we're going to cover the entire OSI model. Uh, again, we're also going to cover uh, TCP and how it relates to the OSI model. And then we're going to dig into some more advanced stuff as we get into... Once I have all of this stuff covered and explained, then I'll dig into things like switching VLANs, uh, other... Uh, maybe MPLS if I can get into that. Uh, otherwise, it's going to be you know fiber stuff, fiber runs, networking... Uh, IPv4 stuff. We'll eventually get into IPv6, uh, but I honestly think that the fact that it's been 23 years since IPv6 was announced, 95 guys, 95 is when that came out, and last year I saw an article and an RFC directly relating to what we're calling IPv10, which is designed to allow IPv4 and IPv6 to operate together. So all the things that we've been trying to do with IPv6 over the last 20 years and all of the things that uh, are we are still doing with IPv4 will hopefully allow for a, a, a either an easier transition to IPv6 or it's just going to prolong the inevitable, but at least everything will work right. So that's kind of what we are doing here in the vault. Until next time, check out all the crap. Subscribe. Bunch of stuff coming up. Check out Dermal Armor. Buy my t-shirts, please. Uh, otherwise, Twitter, Instagram, uh, Facebook. You can find all the links down below. And check out uh, and check out Syntech, who is the the guy who makes the music that I use. So, till next time. My name is Kane. I'm here to help you. <laughs>